welcome each and every one of you here this morning. I hope each one of y'all too had a little prayer with Jesus this morning before you came in. But do pray for the ones who are sick. We've got some in the hospital and some who have come home from the hospital still needs our prayers. We all need the prayer each and every day. Pray for our church that we will locate the pastor that God has in mind for us to have. Also, don't forget Annie Armstrong. It will be continuing until the last of this month. I don't reckon you set a goal this year, do you? We just, whatever comes in, that's what we're going to spend. And, but we are proud that each one of you here this morning. We're proud to have Brother Bart Turner here this morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell this. I hope it don't condemn everybody in here. But Bart and I, when I got to talking to him, I found out who his mother was. And come to find out, we were kin. <laughs> his great-grandmother and my mother were sisters. So if you can figure out, it's on down the line. They tell me after you get to the second cousin, that's too far anyway. But we we're glad to have you this morning, Brother Bart. And uh, anyone else have anything they want to say about a, a, a prayer request? Or yeah. Yeah, Chuck. I'll have to go talk to her and tell her, don't fall forward, fall backwards. That's what I did this past week. <laughs> it's got me down in my back, but yes. Uh, and Carolyn said, Myra, it's look like it's a, we don't never know ourselves when our time is coming, but it looks bad for her, or good for her, however you want to look at it. But uh, after we have our prayer, we will have, special music. I don't know who Mary's got for us this morning. Somebody very special. Who, you? No, no more, more special than me. Oh, special well, bless than your me. heart. Two gentlemen in our church for me. Okay, good. But as soon as I close in prayer, or open us in prayer, rather, as soon as the music is finished, Brother Bart, you come up, have it your will, God's way, however you want to handle it, you do it then. And I do like another thing, too, about him. <laughs> kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning, Father, for allowing us another opportunity to come back out to your house and to worship you. Father, thank you for the many things that have taken place so far. Father, be with Brother Bart as he brings a message to us. You just open up our hearts and our minds to where we can receive what he is trying to tell us from you. And Father, be with the ones who are doing the singing this morning. May it be a blessing to each and every one of us. Again, Father, I thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. And may have this a, an enjoyable day in the Lord. And these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I don't know if y'all think this is special after we get through. <laughs>
Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We shall never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious labor still I refuse. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do our friends despise or sake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms the take will shield thee. Hey, oh, we'll find a soul and stare. Good morning. Good to see y'all here at Griffin Baptist Church. I like a church that'll say good morning back. That was good. I, I appreciate uh, Brother Cowan inviting me here this morning, y'all receiving me in. I it's, uh, Just tell you a little bit about myself. Most of you do know me, I think. I recognize a lot of faces. I born and raised here in Pickens. I was born in 1969. I lived right over the hill over here on Fox Squirrel Ridge. Uh, and then I didn't move too far about a uh, rocks throw from there. I ended up building a house and uh, next to uh, where my granddaddy uh, lived, and that was Barry and Louise Kelly on Kelly Hill over there. So I'm just a Pickens boy and proud of it, <laughs> and uh, love this community, uh, love this church. I've got folks uh, that's gone on with the Lord buried right back here in this cemetery. And what Brother Cal was speaking of is my, it's actually my great aunt. Uh, Geneva Watson, and then I had a Biko and Ola Watson's my great granddaddy and grandma, and uh, and uh, so we have a lot of ties with this community, and this is a wonderful church. Been here a long time, and and uh, it's a blessing. Been here. It's been a while since I've been here. It's uh, been quite some time. I think the last time I was here was during a vacation Bible school, and I don't quite remember exactly why or when it was, but uh, it's been a while. It's a wonderful church, and. It's so good to be here this morning, and just a little bit, I want to tell you my beautiful wife came with me this morning, She, uh, uh, Mandy, uh, she was uh, a steward before she married me, uh, Cecil and Teresa Stewart, you may know them, my father-in-law has gone on to be with the Lord, and, and uh, I thank God for them, uh, I thank God for her, uh, she's a wonderful wife, and um uh, and she's been uh, good, and I got three girls. Uh, not able to be with us. They're involved at our church. It's Kona Baptist Church. It's where I'm from. I spent about 30 years just uh, doing prison ministry. Uh, unfortunately, the past year, because of COVID, I'm, we've not been able to be out there. Y'all pray for us. Uh, that's a ministry that's dear to my heart. My brother Wayne Looper, uh, when I got out of college, uh, asked me to start going with him out there, and the Brown sisters, I call them, they came out there and they used to sing all the time. And I told Susan, and I, or told her sister, 
tell me your first name again. I just lost it, Mary. See, I'm 50. I'm almost 52 years old now. I'm already, but they used to come out there at the prison and sing for us and play. And, and um, man, I'm, I, I was hoping they was going to sing. I hope if y'all have me back next Sunday, I hope they'll sing next Sunday. That's what I'm pushing for anyway. But, um, but they were involved, and it's just Mr. Wayne Looper gave me that opportunity, and I feel like that's my call is the prison ministry. Um, I miss it. And, uh, you know, the Lord gives me opportunities like this to go through within our community at different churches to speak and preach, and I appreciate that. But that's enough about me, and uh, we're going to move on. And I want to pray before we get started this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. And God, just thank you for who you are and how good you are to us. As God, as I sit there and we saying, what a friend we have in Jesus, Lord. It's, you are you such a friend, the best friend we could have. And God, I thank you for that. God, I thank you for your son, Jesus, the one that you sent to die for each one of us. God, I thank you so much for the fact that you cared about us and loved us enough, even though we were just filthy sinners, Lord, that you would send your son to die for us, that we might have hope, eternal life with you one day in heaven. And God, I pray for Griffin Baptist Church, Lord. I thank you for this uh, church and what it represents and the, the love that's come out of this church and the love that's here this morning. And God, I just pray for them. God, I just pray that you'd give them guidance. And uh, God, as they search for a pastor, Lord, I just pray, God, that you'd just be with them. God, I pray that they would seek your will and your discernment, and Lord, as they uh, make decisions. And uh, just let them know, God, that you're there with them going to be there with them the whole entire time, God, and you're going to take care of everything. And God, I thank you for uh, the friends that are here, and God, just bless them, Lord, as we've already heard the sickness that's uh, about us, Lord. We pray for, for the ones that are in the hospitals, the ones that are dealing with the, uh, the falls this week. That uh, Lord, I just pray for them, and God, just give them healing, and just, uh, Lord, just take care of them, Lord, and just, uh, we ask that you bring them back here to the church soon, Lord. God, just lead God and direct us, Lord, as we open up your word this morning. God, I pray that I'll say nothing more or nothing less of your will. And God, just help us to always remember it's all about you and not about us. In your most kind and gracious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, this morning as I talk and as I speak, I, I was thinking of what I want to say, and I always pray, uh, definitely, before I get started. And, and, and it was... Wednesday before God really directed me and what He wanted me to, to preach on this morning. And uh, the thing that He brought to my heart as I was reading uh, was that we all have a story to tell. Each and every one of us have a story to tell. And, uh, you know, last week we celebrated the most wonderful event ever that occurred. And that would be a life-saving story that took place. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, we serve a risen, living, mighty, and sovereign Lord. Amen. And, and we need to understand the fact that we have a story to tell. And this is a story that must be told every single day of our life. We should never take it for granted for what Jesus Christ has done for each one of us. But you know, there's other stories of how our Savior has impacted each one of our lives. And, I, and folks, He's impacted my life in so many stories in my lifetime that I could sit here and tell you over and over and over again. But you know, I, as I was thinking, you know, when it comes to telling and sharing stories, no one ever has a problem okay, of telling others about, you know, little Johnny and how he scored that winning touchdown or how Susie shot the winning basket, you know, or you know how Bobby is at the top of his class. You know, those stories are so easy to tell, but when it comes to sharing our faith and how God has directly impacted our life, we too often just can't come up with the words. And we're all guilty. We know that. Why is that? Why is it that we have problems sharing our faith? 
You see, uh, it's great that Johnny scores the winning touchdown. It's great that Susie scores the winning basket. And it's awesome that Bobby is the top of his class. But guys, that is not going to impact other lives eternally like our, G our Savior Jesus Christ has in each one of our lives. Okay? Those things are important, but the most important thing is those things in our life that Jesus has done, has impacted us, we can share those things to other folks that will impact their lives even more. You say, well, I don't have that story. Well, yes, you do. Okay, if you're saved here this morning, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you have a story to tell. Okay, each one of us do. And this morning, you know, through those life-changing cha struggles and joys that He alone, He allows in our lives, we can tell these stories that can have an eternal impact on someone else. This morning, I have a story to tell, okay? And this happened to Bart Turner, and it started about 25 years ago. Me and my wife <clears throat> were married 26 years ago this past December. Just like anybody else, after that first year, we wanted to start our family. Okay, and we were excited just like anybody else. We decided we want to start our family. We had everything planned out. Okay, after that first year, me and my wife, we were going to have this bouncing baby. Now, we did I say it was a boy or girl? I don't know, but you know, when we decided to start our family, it was just we're going to have a bouncing little baby. We were going to do like everybody else, and we was going to shower that baby with gifts. Okay, we dreamed. I dreamed of the first Christmas, okay, that we were going to have and just couldn't imagine what it was going to be like. You know, I'd been around my nieces and my nephews, you know, uh, we have a beautiful, I have a beautiful little niece that, uh, is, her name's Jordan, and I experienced what a miracle she was, and I just couldn't wait to have my child, okay, but little did I realize that my plans and God's plans were not the same. Okay, and that's the first thing that I can tell you this morning, that God's plans are what's most important. You know, I thought, well, we'll have our first child, and about two years down the road, we'll have another one, and then a couple years, three years down the road, we'll have a third one. But as that first year rocked along, folks, that didn't happen. You see, God had a different plan for Bart and Mandy Turner. That first year we rocked alone and negative test after negative test and we began to wonder and we began to question and doubt began to creep in. God, why are you doing this? You know, we'll love this baby. I'll love this child with more than anything I got. There's people out here that don't want kids. Got kids won't take care of them. That's how I felt. And I said, why are you doing this to me and my wife? People would ask us, you know, when are y'all going to have kids? I want kids. That's what I tell them. And they know what else to say. What y'all waiting on? I was like, waiting on God. And time rolled on. As days went on, days seemed like months. And you, probably some of you know what I'm talking about. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you've dealt with before in your life, there's struggles. It's what life, it's life. As the doubt crept in and the bitterness crept in and the whines and why nots, of course we took the next step. We went to the doctor had tests, tried medicines, and of course the dreaded answer from the doctor is, you're not going to be able to have kids. That's like a punch into your stomach. You know, of course, I'm just like any other daddy. I dreamed of having that boy and going to take him hunting with me and I'm going to fish with him and, you know, and I'm going to watch him play ball and, He's going to be the next Mickey Mantle, you know, or he's going to be the next Bart Starr. That's who I was named after. <laughs> That's why I tell you my daddy named me. He was a big Green Bay Packers fan. But, you know, I was sitting there thinking. 
why? What, what is it, God? Why? Until one night, four years into it, my wife was laying over here in the bed. Many a nights, we both would cry ourselves to sleep. I admit it. I cried a lot because I wanted a baby. One night, though, as Mandy was laying over there, she was crying. I got up out of my bed, and I was just like, I've had it. I can't do it. I went outside. Robert, I got down on my knees. And I looked up to God, and I raised my hands to God, and I said, God, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I need you. Now, I'm tired of hurting, but most of all, I'm tired of seeing my wife hurt, Susan. I said, you got to do something now. You ever been there? I need it now, God, I need it now. And then at that point in time, it was just like God took his hands and his arms around me, hugged me tight, Travis. He told me, he said, Bart, I'm here. I ain't never left you. Been right here with you the whole time. It's you that kind of turned away from me. But he said, I'm going to tell you something. It's all going to be okay. It's going to be fine. He said, you just got to trust me. So I walked back inside. I felt a peace, guys, that I've never felt before in my life. I knew, I didn't know at that point in time when I was on my knees, but I just felt like, God, you got it. He's got it. I finally said, it's yours. It ain't mine anymore. <clears throat> I walked back inside. I sit down on the edge of the bed, and I grabbed my Bible. Why? But God directed me to 1 Samuel 1. And I'm going to read it to you right now. There, there was a certain man, Ramathaim Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elah, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephra, uh, the Ephratite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Peninnah. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when this time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Peninnah, Peninnah his wife and to all her sons and daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a child, man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as he continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. 
I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. And then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked him. And, he, and she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house to Ramah, Elkanah, knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about, after Hannah had conceived, and she bare a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice in his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child's been weaned, and then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. And Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou have weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks and one F, F of, of flour and a bottle of wine, and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by there praying unto the Lord. For this child I pray. And the Lord hath given me my petition when I ask of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Immediately <coughs> I turned over to my wife. Because God had answered my prayers that night as I sit on the edge of my bed. And I told her, I said, Mandy, you quit crying. God's answered my prayers, our prayers. We're going to have a baby. She's going to be a girl. And guess who? We, what we're going to name her? Hannah. And from that point on, we never worried again. We prayed. Fast forward about eight or nine months. We're, we're taking care of a house for a family sit house sitting and they got a farm and we was just taking care of it and that night we were getting ready to go to bed and everything and i'm sitting over there on the bed and all of a sudden my wife comes out of the bathroom with a test in her hand and she's squalling to the top of her lung amen i didn't have to ask i grabbed her i hugged her and i thank god for what he had just done in our life. And I tell you what, first thing I did, I didn't wait for no ultrasound. I picked up the phone, I called my parents, I said, we're gonna have a baby. Name's gonna be Hannah, she's gonna be a little girl. She done the same thing with hers. Next day, Susan, I called in, told Alex Gaddis I wasn't coming in to work. <laughs> I said, me and my wife are going baby shopping. I said, and we're going to buy for our new little girl. We bought her the prettiest pink dress and a necklace that had Hannah on it and a heart. Time rolled on, went to the doctor. Doctor, we walked in, he said, what y'all doing here? We said, we're gonna have a baby. You are, what do you want? We know what we got. It's a little girl and her name's gonna be Hannah. And he said, oh, okay. Then we went to our ultrasound, little ultrasound girl. I took that thing, she said, what do you think it is, what do you want? I said, we, don't, we already know what it is. You can put that thing on her belly if you want to, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a little girl and her name's gonna be Hannah. I had a story to tell, folks. And I was happy to tell that story. February 9th, 2000, Hannah was born 
into this world. Amen. Amen. That was my story to tell. But not only that, the doctor said we couldn't have kids. I just had my first one two years later, April 9th, 2002, Samantha Marie Turner was born. Then 18 months later, August 26, 2003, Jesse Ann Turner was born. Don't tell me my God ain't real. And I did say, God, you've made your point now, okay? <laughs> Three girls, you know. He was going to teach me patience. <laughs> so this morning, I want to tell you one thing. And I got a few points I want to make here of what I learned through this and what you can learn through Hannah's and her testimony. But first and foremost, our God is real. Amen. He's sovereign. He's a loving God that cares about everything about you. Understand that. No matter where you've been, what you've done, or what you're going to embark on, God loves you, and He cares about you, and He wants to know everything about you. How little, how small you may think it is, He cares. The first thing I learned about this is take your burdens to the Lord. Matthew 11, 28, 29 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Until I finally said, God, here it is. It's yours. All right, whatever burden you're facing today, whatever burden you may face tomorrow, it's like the old saying, we're either going in a storm, we're in the midst of one, or we're coming out of one. But wherever you're at in your life, the first thing that you must realize, that I must realize is I got to give it to Him. I can't take it to the altar. I can't take it to Him and turn around and pick it up and walk back with it. I have to give it to Him. And then when I finally did that, when Hannah finally did that, when that night I laid and sat on my knees out there and I just cried, I didn't, I didn't say a word. I cried. But until I finally did that, and showed the faith that I had to say, here it is. That's when God took control. That's when he answered my prayers. And that's the way he answered Hannah's prayers. God hears our prayers. Second, God gives peace in times of trouble. When we leave our struggles in God's hands, he will give us peace. That's the thing that I had to understand. I kept trying to figure it all out myself. I kept trying to find answers. I kept depending on the doctors. And doctors, believe me, are good. And, I, and, and God works through doctors. But I'm going to tell you, the first thing you got to go is you got to go to God. God's going to give you peace in the midst of whatever you're dealing with. Whether He answers our request or whether He just answers, it's going to be okay. God will give you peace. No matter what, it will be a peace that passes all understanding. We've all heard the verse, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's nothing like the peace of God within your heart when you're in the midst of a storm. And God is always there. During those four long years, there was always a longing, but through His love, there was always assurance He was there. I never felt like that He had abandoned me. There was times that I just didn't know exactly where He was at. But I knew he was there. And God gives us grace. He gives us grace. The third thing, he gave Mandy and I a blessing that we were so undeserving of. Don't ever take it for granted for the kids that you have in your life. That was a gift. Me and Mandy were so undeserving. We deserve nothing, folks. You or I deserve nothing. Understand that. 
We deserve the death that Jesus Christ bore on that cross for each one of us. That's what we deserved. We all deserve the pits of hell, but before by the grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. And those two, that Samuel to Hannah and my Hannah was a gift. Take care of those gifts. Appreciate those gifts that God gives you. Appreciate the fact that you can get out of the bed and put your feet on the ground every day. And be happy. Find joy in the gifts. Think about my niece, Jordan. Brett's my twin brother's little girl. She's been confined to a wheelchair her whole life. And she's a reminder to me of what a gift it is to be able to put my feet on this floor and move my feet. Chavis, he's the same way. Those two kids, every time you see them, there's never a sadness about them. There's always joy in their heart. She's taught me more than anybody I've met. Other than my Savior, Jesus Christ, she's taught me what it is to have joy. She don't look at her struggle. She looks at what God's given her in her life. And she just lives. It's a gift. And it's by grace that we're all here today, that we're able to have a loving God that give His Son to us to have eternal hope. Don't ever take it for granted. Through His grace, as I spoke about the joy in Jordan and Travis's heart, through His grace our countenance changed. Just as Hannah's did, mine did. In verse 18, it said of 1 Samuel, it said, So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. We got a lot to be happy for, guys. I got a lot to be thankful for. I got Jesus Christ in my heart. I don't care what comes or what goes. As long as I got Him, I got reason to shout. I got reason to be happy. You know, it, is, it blows my mind how people go out here to Death Valley and they scream their hearts out and hoot and holler. But we as Christians have got more to hoot and holler about than those guys down there. Okay? Be happy. Be thankful. Tell him every day how much you love him, how much you appreciate him. Don't be scared in church, man. Hey, if I get to feeling good, I'm going to let him know it, you know? And you should too. Don't worry. Be able to worship. That's what he wants. I'm telling you, when I get to heaven one day, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be good, boys, I'm telling you. And I'm looking forward to it. And it leads me to my fourth point. God gives us joy. So don't forget it. God can put a smile on our face and deep within our hearts, even in the darkest of nights. Even in those darkest moments, God can give us joy. And, and through my years, and I'm fixing to tell you, one of the biggest things He showed me through this story in my life, through this struggle in my life, is that I can find joy in the struggles. And what I mean by that is, after, you know, if you read Psalm 77, and I'm not going to read it for the sake of time, but Ashpa is the one that wrote this. And in verse 6, he says, I call to remembrance my song in the night. Okay? And what he's talking about there, if you read in Psalm 77, he's saying, and it's just like God's told me, Bart, when you're going through this new struggle, don't forget what I've done. I want you to look back on those past victories in your life, how I was always there and I never left you. Read that Psalms when you get a chance, but don't ever, ever forget what Christ has done for you. Okay? And I can look back every time. There's not a time that He's ever let me down. Now, has there been hard times? Yes. And there's going to be more hard times. I know that. But I'm going to tell you what, folks. 
He's always been there. Every time. And I look back on it, so when I go through that next struggle or whatever it is, and I'm just as guilty as anybody else, I'm not saying that. First thing I'll do is woe is me. I'll drop my head and then I'll say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got three little girls walking around here. It's a reminder of what God can do. It's the devil. That's all it is. It's the devil. He wants to throw up past stuff in your life, whatever it may be. He'll do that, I promise you. But don't let him. Look at what God has done in your life. And lastly, the story of Hannah and my story of Hannah depicts a picture of salvation. There was grace, there was peace, and there was joy. Grace, Ephesians 2.8, as I read before, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. You know, yes, I had to. I had to admit that I was helpless. At that point in time in my life, I couldn't do anything about it. I knew I've tried everything I could, just like if you're lost. You're going to try anything you can to fill that void in your life. And I've watched it. I've watched people. I've watched those prisoners try to fill their life with everything they can to fill that void and it not work. Whoever you are, there's not but one thing that's going to fill you up and take that place of that void, and that's Jesus Christ. And until I realized it in that, my own circumstance, that I could do nothing, only He could, that's when it happened. And that's when Christ will draw us to Him in our tr trouble. Same thing with, th with sin. Christ's grace is the answer. And then the peace. Peace that I receive once I give to Him. Once I give Him everything about that burden, that's when I experience the peace, the new life, just as you accept Jesus Christ into your life. When you accept Him, when you receive the new life, you receive peace. And you know what I'm talking about. It's no matter what, I've got Him, okay? And He gives me peace. Because now we know God and His unconditional love. Once we are saved and the separation has been mended and we have been brought back in right relationship with God. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, the joy. The joy that fills our soul when we come to know Jesus. The joy I felt that night that Jesus... Christ answered my prayer. That joy that only comes from God. And that joy when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior in your life. 1 John 1, 4, And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. That's what Christ wants for you. He wants you to have a full life of joy through His Son, Jesus Christ. Once we've been saved... Once we experience the love of Christ, we all have a story to tell. My challenge to you this morning is if you're here this morning and you're saved, you have a story to tell. Don't be ashamed of it. Tell people what Jesus Christ has done in your life. And you also may have a story just like I do, how Jesus has impacted your life. Don't forget to tell that story. Tell people what God has done for you. Take that opportunity and tell them how He's impacted your life. He's used this story of mine and Mandy's life to help other couples that have struggled. And I truly believe that God gives us struggles to help others. And last of all, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, you've never accepted Him as your Savior, you can begin your story today. You come. I'm going to ask Susan if she'll just play for us. This altar is open. You come this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you've never accepted Him, if you've never called on His name, you come this morning telling Him, God, I messed up. I'm not perfect. 
and I need you to forgive me of my sins. And believing that he went to that cross and died for you and rose three days later, God will save you and you can, you can begin to tell your story. I'll ask you just to bow your heads as Susan plays. If you feel led to come, you come and I'll be glad to show you through Scripture how God can save you. Church, thank y'all. Thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for letting me tell my story, okay? And I love Jesus, I, and I thank him every day for how good he is to me. I love you guys because you are brothers and sisters in Christ, and I love this church, okay? And I'm, I'm going to be praying for y'all, and I, if y'all have me back next week, I'm going to come back next week, okay? And, and I look forward to that. But uh, y'all pray for me, and I'm going to be praying for y'all, and uh, go out this week and tell your story. Tell, them, tell people how God has blessed your life. Uh, we'll, we'll pray, and then we'll be dismissed, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you do for us. And God, thank you for our time together as we gathered in your house to worship you. Lord, it is. It's, just, it's about you. It's about what you've done for each one of us. It's about your son, Jesus. And God, we celebrate the resurrection each and every day of our life because without it, Lord, we have no hope. And God, I thank you for it. And God, I pray for Griffin Baptist Church. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with them. God, just help them and watch over them, Lord. And just uh, lead God and direct us this week. Help us to tell our stories and, and tell people that how much you love them, Lord. And just help us always remember it's all about you and not about us. In your most kind and gracious name we pray. Amen. <laughs>